Hello students. Today we're going to learn about the passive voice. Are you ready? Okay. What can you see here? Yeah, it's a window. And it's broken. The window has been broken. Hmm. I wonder who broke the window? Do you know? I have absolutely no idea. Okay, now I know. It was Gaga, my neighbor. Gaga broke the window when he was playing. Right. So, why do we use the passive voice in the first example and not in the second? Okay, we use the passive voice because we don't know who did the action or because the action is more important than the person who did it. In the first case, when I showed you the picture, we didn't know who had broken the window. Uh, and I was more worried about more worried about the action, and I used the passive. The window has been broken. But then, when I learned that it was Gaga, my neighbor, I knew the person was then more important than the action. That's why I use the passive. Very simple, right? Okay. Apart from using the passive when the focus is on the action, we also use it when politeness is required. This is the reason why you will see the passive in signs, like this ones that you have here. Not only that, we use the passive when we're talking about inventions, books, films, etc. because we give more importance to the process of directing, writing, etc. rather than the person itself. So we would say that something was invented invented, sorry, by, it was discovered by, it was uh, written by, etc. The passive is often used when we talk about the crime because the action, again, is more important. So we, would say, we will say the burglar was arrested, he was sentenced, he was then found guilty and finally he was sent to prison. When we talk about accidents, we also tend to use the passive. Um, so we would say uh, someone was injured in the accident or uh, they were killed in the accident, the car was damaged in the accident, etc. We also use the passive when we're speaking about business because in business the result of our actions is more important. Okay, So instead of saying something like we have produced over 20 different models in the past two years that puts the focus on we, we would rather use to over 20 different models have been produced in the past two years. This way we give importance to the process of producing the models and not the company. Okay, these examples are headlines from the news because we also use, oh, the passive is very commonly used in the news. Trans-Pacific sailing record is broken, sales of important olives are banned, or Lula should be marked in Mensalo scandal are um, headlines. The verb to be is in brackets because in, in headlines we usually get read or don't use the auxiliaries. But that's another story and I will tell, we will talk about it some other day. But now just get the idea. When um, writing a piece of news, the passive is very commonly used. Okay. Ha! Huh. Do you know these two? Uh, I know them. They are a very famous cartoon uh, when I was little. For those of you who don't know them, these are Tom and Jerry. Tom is the cat and Jerry is the mouse. Let's see. So, in the active voice, we would say Tom always chased Jerry. But in the passive, the sentence changes a little bit and we get Jerry was always chased by Tom. Let's see how we make the passive. Okay, the first step to use the passive voice is to distinguish between the subject and the object. Almost all sentences in English contain three basic elements that you need to know. The first one is the subject. The subject is who does the action. In this case, Tom chases Jerry. Tom does the action. Tom 
is the subject. The second basic element is the verb. The verb is the action itself. In a sentence, Tom chases Jerry, chases is the action. That is the verb. Finally, complements. Well, there are different types of complements in English. We have prepositional that tells us about the place or uh, they tell us about the time. But there are specific complements called the object that tells about uh, the receiver of the action, who receives the action. In the sentence, Tom chases Jerry, Jerry is the object. Okay, so how uh, do the elements, how do we work with these elements from active to passive? So in the active, we will have um, the subject, the verb and the complement. As you will see, the verb occupies the same position. It is mid position. It is in the middle. The subject in the active form will now go after the verb, right? So Tom, which was in, in first position in the active, is now in last position and it's introduced by a preposition, by. I'll tell you why in a minute. As for the complement, is the complement in the active is now the subject in the passive. So this is the structure in the passive. We have a subject, then we have the verb to be that is conjugated, then we will have the past participle of the main verb, main verb in this case is chase, and then we will have an agent that is introduced by the preposition by. Okay? Very simple. Let me tell you something. By. If the agent, that is the person or the company or thing that does the action, is important, we introduce it with the preposition by. Romeo and Juliet was written by William Shakespeare. In this case, it is important to mention who wrote the play. But there will be cases in which the agent is not important or we know who it is, so we don't need to mention it. For instance, the burglar was arrested. We don't need by because we know the police arrest uh, people, right, that commit crimes, so we don't need to um, mention. Or this sentence, the cat was found inside the library. What is important is that someone found the cat, but someone, we don't know who, so the agent is not important. We don't need to introduce by someone. Okay, let's see the changes. In the present simple, we will have the verb to be conjugated in its different forms and then the past participle of the main verb. So makes changes to is made by. Ford makes cars, cars are made by Ford. In the present continuous, we will have the verb to be um, and, um, as uh, auxiliary and then it will be also in the ing form. Then it will be followed by the past participle. So, is or are learning will become is or are being learned, as in these examples. Many people are learning Chinese nowadays. Chinese is being learned by many people nowadays. Society is learning many languages today. Many languages are being learned today. In case of the past simple, well, we have the past, uh, the verb to be in the past simple and the past participle of the main verb. Bought changed to was bought by. Facebook bought WhatsApp. WhatsApp was bought by Facebook. Pa present perfect. Hmm. In present perfect, we have the auxiliary have, um, has or have, remember? Uh, and the past participle of the main verb. In the passive, we will have the auxiliary has or have, the past participle of the verb to be, and the past participle of the main verb. So we have two past participles. Be careful. So, Mary has kept my secret, turns into my secret has been kept by Mary. In the future, it's very simple. We have the auxiliary will and the verb without the auxiliary. So will play will change to will be played by. Manchester United will play the final. 
The final will be played by Manchester United. We can also use the passive with modal verbs. Remember modal verbs like can, could, should, must, etc. In this case, we will have the, the uh, modal verb can, then um, the auxiliary be without the infinitive, and the past participle of the main verb. So can eat changes to can be eaten by. Let's see the examples. Everybody can eat this soup. This soup can be eaten by everybody. That was very easy, right? Okay, that's all I have to say about the passive voice. I hope that you uh, learned a lot with it and that you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.